Y'all come on up here and help Nelson out so he don't look so lonely. <laughs> Hey, good, good evening. Good evening. Good to see you back out today. Looks like people got their belly fulls today. Um, but glad y'all chose to come out this way. Let's just worship the Lord tonight. Pray for the choirs. We
Yeah, shake hands with your neighbor. Amen. Before you get too very comfortable, I want to give you about one more verse and one more chorus. It might move up just a little bit. Even even come over here. Brother David did take a shower before <laughs> church today, so you guys can move over here and even be on that side. But everybody move up a little bit tonight. Let me take a moment to uh, not only welcome everyone to church tonight, but also remind you of some upcoming events, bring you up to date with a few items. And um, I, I know that we are few in number tonight, um, but let me just give a, a strong reminder that where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst. Uh, that's, that's not an excuse to only have a few in church. But it is a reminder that if we meet for the right reason, uh, that God blesses it. And uh, I do appreciate so very much you being in church tonight. I don't ever take those sorts of things for granted. Um, let me encourage you, please, to uh, be remembering... Uh, our men's prayer time on Tuesday morning at 11, our Wednesday morning Bible study at 11, our Wednesday evening service at 6, uh, our backpack buddies item for December. Uh, let's, uh, Miss Kathy and I were talking about that. I know um, Fruit Cups or Chef Boy RD, um, whatever you guys would like to bring, uh, we'll make sure again that, that all of that gets uh, to the backpack buddies ministry. Uh, certainly had a great meal after the morning service. Uh, my thanks uh, to the ladies uh, that work in the kitchen, for the men uh, that work in the kitchen as well, uh, for everyone who uh, does more than their part uh, to put something like that together. Uh, the Christmas card mailbox is in the hallway, and many of you are already uh, availing yourselves of that opportunity to use it and to get some Christmas cards into uh, the hands of church family. Uh, let's remember about our community breakfast Saturday morning at 8 a.m. And again, that's, uh, that's an important uh, opportunity for us to, again, reach out to this community. Uh, but I do want to encourage you to be a part of it. Invite someone uh, to come and bring somebody with you. Uh, all of those sorts of things in regards to the community breakfast. I'll come back up in just a few minutes and mention some prayer requests, but Brother Chris is coming right now as we worship the Lord in song tonight. Brother Chris. 3.30, 3.30, first, second, and last. saved a rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Twas 
was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun Amen, thank you, you may be seated I want you to continue to pray for Miss Joanne Wiley, as well as Brother Tommy Jones, and also for Bonnie and Tommy's son, Todd, who is still in the hospital in Shelby. Uh, keep praying for several families that are dealing with sicknesses right now, uh, as long, uh, along the lines, I should say, uh, as we continue to pray for the family of Debbie Parker. Uh, Ms. Phyllis Gillespie had some uh, procedures done this past week, had some tests run. We want to continue to pray for her and uh, ask the Lord's hand to be upon her. Uh, does anyone else have any special spoken prayer? I'm saying Brother Billy Dixon is at home uh, today having injured his back at work on Wednesday. And uh, he's been to the doctor, but he's got... Uh, some serious pulled muscles in his back right now, so we want to pray for him. Miss Faith. Son, Mike, oh my goodness. Let's pray for Brother Dickie and Miss Faith's son, Mike, uh, that has pneumonia. Pray for him tonight. Yes, sir. Brother Nelson's brother. Let's pray for him tonight. Mark Wiley is at home, uh, not feeling well as his uh, blood sugar dropped to like 47 this afternoon. Uh, it's climbing back up, but he still does not feel well, so let's pray for him. How about Shelly? Uh, we saw Shelly yesterday. Tanya saw Shelly here at church yesterday as she was cleaning. Keep praying for Miss Shelley. Remember my friend Amber, they just got back from a cruise and she was sick when she got home. And she's got muscle disease. She's got MD, dyskinia, scrabbiness, or however you say that. And I thought it was just because she was cooped up in the car because she said the body was hurting. Wow. But she went to the doctor today and she's got a flu. Wow. Let's pray for Taylor's friend. Miss Catherine had raised her hand. Yes, ma'am. Pray for Miss Catherine's son, Michael. Anyone else tonight? Any other special spoken objects? Brother David. A couple of families. Uh, pray for uh, Billy Jackson, a lifelong friend of mine. He passed away Monday and the word a couple of days ago. And, um, he was actually on his way back from the doctor. He never even said the doctor. He died call on the way back. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. We talked the other day, and of course, he usually breaks down. You know, when I'm just 
talked about it. He said he had never been so drunk in his life. He yes, sir. Now, and him and Brenda have been married for many, many years. And, you know, he don't know. He didn't know what to do with his sister. Yes, sir. Pray for Brother David's uh, two requests tonight. Someone else. Yes, ma'am. Um, it's a very, uh, very sobering topic. But even in the video that I showed you this morning, it spoke about the fact that uh, suicides rise during the month of December. Um, you'll, you'll have more suicides during that month than you will any other month during the year. Um, and often, again, it is because of depression, loneliness, sadness, all of those things just kind of caving in on a person. And for whatever this is worth and for whoever needs to hear this tonight, um, uh, before you would ever do something that is a permanent solution to a temporary problem, and I, I pray that you'll hear how I mean that tonight, uh, please call me, please call my wife, uh, please call one of us, uh, it doesn't matter if it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 3 o'clock in the morning. Please call us. Uh, those that are watching, please uh, please call us or call uh, a friend or a family member. Um, do that, please, uh, before uh, you would uh, do harm to yourself. Um, Brother David. I don't know if it's still the same or not, but I'm pretty sure I heard not, not long ago that Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is an accurate statistic as well. No, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most certainly is. Uh, please, uh, let, let's pray for, um, for this family even that Ms. Phyllis mentioned uh, that is now dealing with uh, the, the death of a loved one. Um, many things to consider tonight. Other special spoken objects that are on your hearts. There's a boy I went to school with. He wrecked his motorcycle on the way to work back in September. And they had to amputate his leg. And him and his stepdad were sharing the bike and they were going around and 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 around Jeff Kennedy, a co-worker of Brother Chris's that has throat cancer. He told me that the uh, doctor told him he had 99% that they would get everything and that he had a 99% survival rate. So Amen. he was only stage one, so that was good. Amen. Amen. Keep praying for this request. Anyone else tonight? Ms. Sylvia. Yes, ma'am. Brother Conrad and Miss Sylvia's older son, Tommy, oldest son. Tony. Tony, sorry. Tony, he has some health problems. Let's bow our heads and hearts tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you again for the opportunity that we have to be in your house. Uh, thank you for your blessings on our lives and for the ways that uh, you have uh, taken uh, such good care of us uh, each and every day. Uh, many times ways that we uh, overlook or that we take for granted or that we don't realize uh, how that you have protected us. Uh, you, uh, you kept uh, a reckless car from coming across our path or uh, you caused us to delay uh, for a minute or two and uh, in doing such, uh, Father, you protected us, and we praise you for that tonight. 
I pray right now that you would be with all of the names and the needs that have been mentioned. Uh, you better than anyone knows what's going on, uh, even in items that were not spoken tonight, in burdens that are upon hearts, uh, places where uh, we walked into this room carrying a crushing weight. And I do pray right now that you would uh, be uh, with those people and those places. Uh, we pray for those in our church family that are not here tonight for one reason or another, whether they are sick uh, or, Father, uh, even uh, indifferent uh, to being in your house on a Sunday night. Uh, I pray that you would convict them, and I pray that you would show them the importance and the need, uh, the joy that comes from being in your house. Uh, and again, I just uh, pray that uh, we will be about your business by encouraging and inviting people to be here. God, I pray that you would be with uh, folks uh, that uh, have been sick today, uh, be with Tom and Linda Putnam, uh, touch them as well as uh, all of these others whose names have been mentioned and uh, not here uh, tonight in service. Bless them. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Chris. 608. All three verses, 608 for the offertory. O oh, land of rest for thee, I sigh. When will the moment come? When I shall lay my armor by and dwell in peace at home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. To Jesus Christ I fled for rest. He bade me cease to roam and lean for comfort on his breast till he conducts me home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll Sought at once my Savior's side, no more my steps to roam. With him I'll brave death's chilling tide and reach my heavenly home. We'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till the blessing on our off. Dear Lord, we give thanks for the opportunity to be in your house and do your will. It's all for your glory. Everybody that was mentioned earlier on prayer requests, just if you go out and minister to their needs. There's so many people in this world having hard times that we know about and we're not even scratching the surface of right. the people that we don't know about. That's right. As Christmas comes up, it's gifts given, gifts received. Let us always remember that we have already received the greatest, the greatest gift yes. that anybody could ever give. When you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, that we may have everlasting life. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Thank you, musicians. Thank you for ministering to our hearts tonight. And again, it is good to see everyone in church this evening. As you are on your way in your copy of the Word of God to the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews tonight. And I want to uh, ultimately get to one particular verse uh, that we'll somewhat use as uh, our springboard for this particular subject. I need to give you a, a lot of lead-in to this tonight. And if you've got a study guide that was in your bulletin from this morning, you've already looked at it, and I had made mention even a few weeks ago that uh, on Sunday nights in December, we were going to talk about this particular topic. For the next couple of weeks, we will look at some things that are unseen. And I say that to you, and it's like all of God's people said, huh? That we're going to look at some things that are unseen. We will study some pertaining to the spirit world around us. Now, I say that to you tonight, and I want to make sure that we are all somewhat plugged in on the same page and thinking in the same vein tonight. Uh, I must let you know that if we were to peel back what we call reality and look into the spirit world, that in many ways we might be frightened tonight. If we were to see the demons and even the angels and how that they are engaged in warfare, make no mistake, there is such a thing as spiritual warfare. But we're going to look at some matters pertaining to the spirit world around us. There is much confusion on this subject, and we will lay to rest some myths, and more importantly, learn some incredible truths that will change the way we view the world around us and how we live within it. We should never underestimate the ministry of angels. Because Scripture says that, well, we'll get to Hebrews 13 in just a minute. Angels have a job to do in our lives and in this world. The world is not too interested in Bible doctrine today, but in the last few years, last several years, actually, there. Uh, is a subject that has the world's attention, and that subject is angels, believe it or not. From Oprah to Fox and Friends to television and movies and dozens of books, there has been a flurry of interest concerning angels. Even various personal accounts seem to pique the curiosity of millions of people around the world. Uh, it will not be long again before someone will sell a piece of toast that they have put in their toaster that has miraculously come out of it with an image of an angel on it, and they'll sell that on eBay for hundreds of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. I'm not making that up, by the way. That happens. Again, even various personal accounts pique the curiosity. A few years ago, Tanya and I lived near a lake where a dad and his young son were fishing one night. Somehow, they capsized their boat and were presumed to have drowned but as the folks went out in search for that father and son, as they were dragging the lake trying to find their bodies, they found the boy and his father sitting on a large stump sticking up out of the water. 
they told, the father and son, told how they thought they were going to drown. And then their testimony was that someone or something picked them up and put them on the stump and left. Now, again, I'm just relating to you something that happened near where we once lived. The world may not want to hear much about Jesus, and you mark it down, the world doesn't want to hear much about Jesus today. But for whatever reason, angels interest them. It is a sensational topic for the world. But for Christians, it is much more than a novelty. It is Bible truth that angels exist and that they are active. But in order to say that and to understand exactly what angels do, we've got to make sure that we look to the Word of God as to what it has to say, not our opinion, not even our personal experience, but what does the Word of God have to say about angels? And so I want to give you something to think about very quickly this evening. Four reasons, check this out, four reasons why the world is enamored with angels. I've got to jump into this quickly tonight. One of the reasons is a spirit of hopelessness. Boy, we were just talking about it a few minutes ago. A spirit of hopelessness. People are looking for answers and are looking for something to fill their empty spirit. This spirit of hopelessness. And so, sadly, instead of looking to the Lord, they'll look to something spiritual. Yes, they'll look to an angel, but they may never even bother to look past the angel. One of the reasons is this spirit of hopelessness. Another reason why the world is enamored with angels is a spirit of selfishness. A spirit of selfishness. Let me explain. Christians are called to be servants. Boy, how I feel like I need to remind everyone of that today. Christian, hear me tonight, and I, I'm not trying to become your enemy. Uh, I'm not trying to make you become mine in what I'm getting ready to say, but Christians are called to be servants. But our society would rather be served instead of serve. That's the kind of world in which we are living. And sadly, it has crept in, and in many places, it has taken over the church. We'd rather be served than to serve. I run the risk of making you mad, but folks, listen to me tonight. God did not call you to sit on a pew and to be served. God saved you so that you would serve Him and serve others. Amen. It's again very interesting, the spirit of selfishness. Angels are ministering spirits. They are servants. And the reason why I say this spirit of selfishness, people want to know what angels can do for them. They really do. A third reason why the world is enamored with angels deals with the spirit of the new age. A few Wednesday mornings ago, we talked about the new age religion, which really isn't new at all. But our society, I will continue to say to you, our society is being conditioned for the end times. And on that note, I've got to call a real quick time out and just caution all of us about something right now. Brother Conrad and I have talked about this in passing over the course of the last couple of months but hear me, and I know that I'm going to be labeled as an extremist and an alarmist, and that's okay, that's all right. You better watch what's going on from the White House concerning America's position with Israel. 
you better watch out. And you better see, because right now, statements are already being made. The vice president talked about how uh, they, they better, Israel better, be doing things the way that America wants them done. That was the gist of it all. You can go back and watch the press conference uh, that Israel uh, needs to make sure that, that they are uh, being humanitarian in dealing with Hamas and all the innocent lives of Palestinians that are being lost. Folks, look, let's, let's stop right there and realize no innocent lives would have been lost had Hamas not done what they did. Israel has every right to defend herself. Okay, and they are not occupying the land, they own the land. Because God has already decreed that. Well, this spirit of new age, our society is being conditioned for the end times. The world will accept the supernatural during the tribulation. The Antichrist gains power on a platform of signs and wonders. And we just spent a considerable amount of time discussing the book of Revelation and what the Antichrist will do, and he will use signs and wonders. And so angels and the interest of such or in such factors right into it. There's a fourth reason why the world is enamored with angels. A spirit of curiosity. A spirit of curiosity. We are all curious about the unknown. We are all curious about the unknown. Uh, that is, again, where uh, three-year-olds and philosophers intersect. A three-year-old child and a philosopher will intersect in, I want to know why. I want to know why. I want to know all the answers. I want to know why. Well, listen to me. We have this spirit of curiosity about us. We're all inquisitive about the unknown. And let me lovingly say to you, there are some things that we won't know till we get to heaven. We, we won't. You can be curious about it all you want. But there's some lessons that we will not learn until we get to glory. And let me clue you in on something. It won't matter then. So questions, uh, questions abound. And people have a multitude of questions about angels. Such as, what do angels look like? Do we have guardian angels? How many angels are there? What is an archangel? Is it possible to see an angel? You'll have people sitting in Baptist churches that will even ask, do I pray to angels? Questions such as, what about demons? Are they real? How are they different? And then yet another one, will I someday become an angel? And I know, again, that I'm going to upset somebody on this. And I'm not trying to be, be your enemy. I'm not trying to make you mad. But with all due respect... When, when I shuffle off of this mortal coil, if that were to happen sometime soon, please do not put on Facebook that heaven needed another angel in the heavenly choir and that I gained my wings. I'm not going to. Neither are you. We do not become... Some of you are going, oh my goodness. Pastor, I didn't know you felt that way. We're going to have a vote tonight to see whether or not we want to have you continue on as our pastor. You don't become an angel when you die. This series, the couple of nights that we'll spend on this topic, will answer these questions and many more. Uh, the world is interested in angels for all the wrong reasons. But we have good reason to be interested and there is way too much about this in Scripture to ignore it. 
Uh, even right now, some may ask if I have ever seen an angel every day when I look at my wife. I see one. Uh, Jesus believed in angels. Jesus referred to angels on several occasions. The Apostle Paul did the same. As far as I know, I have never seen an angel. But the Bible indicates that I probably have and just don't know it. Now everybody's going, huh? Uh, look at it with me, Hebrews 13, verse 2, where the Word of God says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Okay, let's find out exactly what that does mean when we talk about what the verse of Scripture have entertained angels unawares. It could very well be that the Lord sent an angel by your way one day and you didn't realize that it was an angel. It could have been someone that stopped you in the parking lot of a mall or a grocery store held you up just long enough, as I prayed just a moment ago, to let that reckless car go past you instead of hitting you on your way home. Angels, my friends, are mentioned. I think this is on your study guide tonight. Angels are mentioned over 250 times in the Scriptures. Over 250 times. Hey, if God mentions it once... Uh, we ought to pay attention to it. Once is enough. But to mention angels 250 times, it is a topic at which we should look. And so let me give you some things to consider as we think about uh, tonight, specifically five different thoughts pertaining to angels and a biblical description of such. Uh, number one, the word angel literally means messenger. It literally means messenger. Let's go all the way back months and a couple of years ago now, it feels like, to when we started our study in the book of Revelation. We would get to Revelation chapter 2 and into chapter 3, unto the angel of the church at Ephesus, unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, unto the angel of the church at Pergamos, all through all seven of those churches in the book of Revelation, unto the angel well, at that time, what is being referenced is unto the pastor or the messenger for that church. You didn't realize that pastors were angels, did you? Uh, the word literally means messenger. And on numerous occasions, in fact, we saw this morning, looking at Luke chapter 1, that Gabriel showed up and delivered a message to Mary. So an angel, literally, the word literally means messenger. Number two, angels are created spirit beings. Now, I'm going to mention some of these items and then go into a degree of detail. Angels are created spirit beings. God created them as spirits before the foundation of the world, and before there was time. From where do we get such? From the Word of God. Look at Psalm 148, starting in verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise ye Him, all His angels. Praise ye Him, all His hosts. Praise ye Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all ye stars of light. Praise Him, ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. The entire context of right there is talking about everything in Psalm 148, verses 1 through 5. Everything that has been mentioned, God created. They are created spirit beings. Number three. Angels are not eternal beings. 
Well, why might I say that? Because I just said to you that they were created spirit beings, and they are not eternal. They have not always existed. They may always continue to exist, but they had a beginning. Why, though, were angels created? If they are not eternal beings, why were angels created? Colossians 1 answers that question for us. Look at it starting in verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Don't, don't get lost in all of the wording of Colossians 1, 16 through 18. We should never view the Word of God as something in which we find ourselves lost in what it's saying to us. All things were created by Him. Even visible and invisible. And angels, ladies and gentlemen, were created for the same reason we were created. And what is the reason for which we were created? We were created to bring glory to God. Plain and simple. Oh, pastor, I I thought I was created so that I could do whatever I wanted to. I, I thought once I got saved that I could live my life however I well pleased. Don't know where you got that. You certainly didn't get it from the Word of God. We were created, just as angels were created, for His good pleasure and to bring glory to Him. Stop right there. Are you, am I, fulfilling the purpose for which we were created? Are we bringing glory to God in all that we do and in all that we say? Never lose sight of the fact that we were created to bring glory to God. Number four. Angels are not glorified human beings. And I have already alluded to this tonight, but let me go ahead and and burst the bubble even more. When someone dies, there is usually somebody who says, God needed another angel in the heavenly choir And I don't want to trouble you tonight, but that is not true. Humans do not become angels when they die. You you again will wonder from where in the Scriptures do we get such a thought and such a position. Psalm 8, starting in verse 4, will remind us, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him, meaning man, or son of man even, a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. So once again, to just make sure that we're all believing the same thing, because that's, that's important in our world, and it's certainly important in our church You do not become an angel when you die. The Bible also says that Christ, when he came to earth, uh, was made a little lower than the angels. He did this in order to redeem mankind and to elevate mankind to a higher level than angels. This is where it gets kind of interesting because Hebrews 2 verse 9 reminds us, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And again in Ephesians 6 verse 12 reminds us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, 
against spiritual wickedness in high places. There is, again, real spiritual warfare. And that's why I say to you that if we were granted the spiritual vision to be able to see into the other world, into the spirit world, Brother David Wyatt, it would curl our hair or cause it to stand up or we'd be a little bit taken aback by it. Angel literally means messenger. Angels are created spirit beings. Angels are not eternal beings. Number four, angels are not glorified human beings. Number five, angels are invisible spirit beings. Now, I say that, and somewhere somebody's going, "Uh, now wait a minute, Uh, aren't there times when angels make their presence known and when they would even appear as human beings? Yes, they would take on a human appearance. But for the most part, we are not going to see them, again, unless the Lord blesses us with us entertaining an angel unawares, going back to Hebrews 13 too. You with me? This means yes. Amen even works better. Angels are invisible spirit beings. Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? They are spirits. They occasionally reveal themselves in a human-like form for a specific purpose, but this is not typical, and they certainly do not need a body or a host in order to exist. An angel doesn't. Now, we can go all the way back to the book of Genesis. We can talk about it uh, just outside of the Garden of Eden. We can go into an episode with Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah when there were angels that visited Lot in an attempt to try to get him and his family out of Sodom. And so again, angels can reveal themselves in human-like form. Well, it has been long said that a picture is worth a thousand words. So here is an Old Testament picture for you to consider tonight. It begins in 2 Kings 6, verse number 8. Follow along with me. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Boy, this is such an interesting passage, and I'll stop right there for a minute. It's amazing how God had revealed to Elisha Things that the king of Syria thought he was keeping to himself. King of Syria, Brother David, wondered, is somebody here being a spy? Uh, Are they telling the king of Israel things that they shouldn't? I want to find out right now who the spy is. No, king. Um, Elisha, uh, he's telling the king of Israel the words that you're speaking in your bedchamber. I, I think you need to get this idea in your mind, the people of Syria believe God is somehow letting Elisha know their plans. Let's continue on. And he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night." And compassed the city about. 
And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. All right, stop for a minute. Uh, let's, let's bring you up to speed on something. The Syrians figure out that Elisha is in the city of Dothan. Elisha's servant wakes up one morning, yawns, stretches, scratches, and heads to the front porch to get the paper. I'm being facetious right there. But he looks up and he sees the entire city surrounded by the Syrian army. There in front of him is the Syrian army. Uh, he runs to Elisha. And can you not again imagine a little bit of this conversation? Can you not hear him say, uh, boss, we're in trouble. We're, we're in deep, deep trouble right here. And Elisha looks out and says, no problem. There's more of us than of them. Is that not what Elisha, he said, there's more for us than are for them. Is that not what Elisha said? Yes. Again, uh, the servant, put yourself in his sandals for a minute tonight. The servant has got to be wondering. And if I had been the servant, I would have stopped right there and I would have said, no, wait a minute, is this new math? You know, when did they change math? When did that happen? Let's see, one, two of us, and look at all of them. How can you say that there's more with us than there are with them? Again, just put yourself in the servant's sandals for a minute. Would that not be the understandable, right thing to think? Now look at verses 17 and 18. And Elisha prayed... And said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. The thing that I need you to see, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw... And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now, I don't know how you see this. In my mind's eye, I see the angels, their horses and chariots, encircling Elisha. They are there between Elisha and the Syrian army. They are around Elisha protecting him. I'm going to come all the way back to something I said at the beginning. If God would peel back what we call reality, if God were to answer Elisha's prayer for us tonight, I wonder what we would see. You see, in 2 Kings, these were angels. This is the army of God. Though we cannot see them, angels are here among us. There may not be as many empty seats in here tonight as you think there are. There may not be. It is my prayer, and it has always been such, that the Lord would encamp his angels round about this place, that he would keep any evil spirit, any demonic force, any devilish scheme 
from entering in and disrupting what God wants to do in this place. May God continue to reveal to us that His angels are guarding and protecting us as they are ministering spirits sent from Him. We'll get into this a little bit more next Sunday night. Would you bow your heads and hearts with me?